Welcome back. In this section, we're going to continue working on our final project, the face recognition app that we've built. And we have the front end mostly done for it. But now we need a server, something that the front end can communicate with so that this app can live on more than just of our laptop. We can actually deploy it. And if you remember our app, we have a sign in. And the sign in also links to a register that we can register the users. And if we just had the app the way it is now, there's nothing interacting with it. Every time we log into the app, we can just create a new user, a new password and sign in, no problem. But if we build a backend for it, we now have the ability to interact with it. We can even include a database so there's memory and we can have actual users that our backend will remember. And we'll get to the database in the next sections. But for now, we worked on Node and Express and we should be familiar with how they work. It's fairly nice and simple, right? We're simply creating URLs and endpoints and providing a response to the front end. So that's what we're going to work on in this section. If we go back to our app, just looking at this app, we can figure out what endpoints we might want to have. We definitely want to have a sign-in endpoint. We want to have a register endpoint. And every time we log into this app, well, we'll have some sort of a profile. We want our name and our rank displayed. And ideally, this rank will change based on how many faces or how many URLs I've submitted for my profile. So here's the fun part. We actually won't be really touching the front end for the first couple of videos. Because the way you want to build an API server is you want to figure out what the functionality is that we want and test it out on something like Postman. So for the next couple of videos, we're going to be using Postman and just creating our server. And with Postman, we're going to test our server just like we did in the previous section, get all our endpoints working, and then finally we're going to connect it to our front end. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, over here, I have renamed our front end project to SmartBrain, but that's the React app that we've been working on. And I've also created a folder called SmartBrain API. And it has absolutely nothing in it except for a package.json. So I just ran npm in it, but it's something that we are already familiar with, so I won't bore you with it. And then I've installed a couple of packages that we've used in the previous section. The Express framework, so that we can build a server really nicely. Nodemon, so we can run Nodemon in our scripts and make sure our server is running. And we also have Body Parser, which we used to parse and have access to the request.body to read JSON and form data. Other than that, well, there's no JavaScript file. So let's start off by creating a server.js. And now that we have server.js in the scripts, we can just say that npm start. And again, it's JSON, so I got to wrap it in curly brackets. And this start will just say nodemon server.js. And now every time we run npm start, our server will run. But we have nothing yet. So let's get our basic skeleton of our Express app. And this should be familiar to you by now. We'll just have a const express equals require the express package. We'll then create our app by running express. And then finally, we'll have app.listen and we'll use port 3000. And within the listen, we can actually send it a second parameter, which is a function. And within this function 
it will run right after the listen happens on port 3000. And just to make sure that everything is running smoothly, we'll just say app is running on port 3000. Nodemon kind of does this for us, but I like having it here regardless. All right, so just to test this, if I do npm start, we have Nodemon server started, app is running on port 3000, just like I've said it here. All right, so now that we have app running, let's just create a basic route to make sure that everything is working nicely. We can just create a app.get at the root route. And again, as we've done previously, this will get a request response. And in here, we'll just do a response.send. This is working. Let's save and go back to our Postman and do our localhost 3000 and we'll just do a root. And we get this is working. Perfectly. So now that we have this set up, I like planning our API. And this is something as a developer you really want to do before you just start coding. You want to make sure that you have an idea of what your API design will look like. So let's think about this. I'm going to wrap this in comments and we can work on it one by one. We want to have a root route that perhaps for now we'll just say responds with this is working. We also want to have a sign in route because, well, we want people to sign in. And this sign in will most likely be a post request because we're posting some data, some JSON, the user information. And it's going to respond with either success or fail. All right. We also have a register. And the register, again, will be a post request because we want to add the data to the database, or in our case, a variable in our server and with our new user information. So perhaps this one, instead of saying success fail, we will return the new created user to make sure that everything is working. And we will say that this is the new user object that will return. Okay, we also want in the home screen to have an ability to access the profile of the user. So perhaps we'll have a profile with an optional parameter of user ID so that each user has their own home screen. And this will most likely be a get request. We just want to get the user information and this will return us the user. And because we want to work with the ranking or anytime a user posts a new photo, we want to make sure that their count of how many photos they've submitted goes up. And maybe you have a way to keep score, a variable that increases by one every time a user submits these photos and then checks against other users to see who has submitted the most and give them a rank. Perhaps we can have a image endpoint that again will be a post. Or maybe in our case, because we're updating the score, it should be a put because the user already exists and we want to make sure that there's an update on the user profile. And this will just return the updated user object or perhaps whatever we've updated. In our case, a count of some sort. And you also might be wondering here, with the sign-in, if we're not creating a new user, why are we doing a post? And if you remember, anytime we're sending a password, we don't really want to send it as a query string, do we? We want to send it inside of the body, ideally over HTTPS, so that it's hidden from man-in-the-middle attacks and it's secure. 
looking at this, this might change as we go through the project, but we have an idea of what we want to create. So in the next videos, we're going to start creating these endpoints and testing them with Postman to make sure that they're working. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.